Hello internet people, David here, and this is day 6 of my game development journey. I'm working on a little RPG game called Naughty Dungeon that will feature little peanut characters. And this is my update that I have for you today. Now before you watch this video, make sure to check out the previous days. If you don't want to do that, make sure to watch day 0 so you understand my motivation. So I started experimenting with a thing called a grid map, and I'm still not exactly sure how this thing works. Um, but in a grid map, you get a mesh library, and then inside the mesh library, you can put your textures, and it allows you to place them down on the ground like so. And I can go over here and select a different type of texture and put those down as well. So this seems to be an easy way of kind of laying out your floor. I'm not exactly sure if I use this as well for like walls and other structures in my game. Um, I still have to read up on how grid maps work. If anyone has a good resource, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to check it out so that I understand how to maybe design levels a correct way. I don't know. Oh, look how cute he is. He's so cute. I do find myself getting a little overwhelmed with all the things I have to learn in Godot. Um, I feel like some of the stuff I knew in Unreal Engine and I'm kind of relearning how it works in this game engine. Um, oh, I think my dogs are barking again in the background. They'll do that from time to time just to make my recording of these vlogs even harder. Where was I? Yeah, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with all the different parts of this game I have to start working on. Um, things such as just laying down flooring seems to be a complicated endeavor. Figuring out how I'm going to make my walls and have my character pass behind my walls um, is something I also have to learn. And the list of things I have to learn keeps growing and growing. And it's starting to feel a little daunting, a little overwhelming. Um, so if anyone has any tips or tricks or resources that you can share with me, please do so. I'll spend some time watching them or reviewing them while I'm on my break at work. Um, so that I can learn as much as I can while working full time. Because I don't have as much time as I'd like to work on this game outside of work hours. So one thing I wanted to figure out was how do I get the camera to follow my peanut character so that the camera is just not positioned statically. If you can see this purple outline, this is the camera. And if I go ahead and play this scene, the camera should be angled here. And as you can see, my peanut's moving around, but I want the camera to follow my character. And what I found is that is as easy as just grabbing this camera and making it a child of my player. So now if I hit play, the camera is following my player. Who would have thought it'd be that simple? I didn't think it was that simple. I think in Unreal Engine, you you do the same thing where you have the camera attached to your character, but there's like an arm mechanism as well. And I think I kind of want to do that for this process as well, um, just so that I have a bit more control over the camera. Right now the camera just kind of follows my character very statically. I kind of want the character to smoothly follow the character as if you're an actual person filming the character. So it's not going to be exact pixel by pixel, but it's going to be more... I don't know what the term is, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So I watched a few videos on how to accomplish that in 3D because there seems to be a lot of guides out there in 2D. Um, but not a whole lot with a 3D camera that I came across. So there was this video by Born CG, I think I found, that really helped me figure out how to do that. And it's like, it was like one line of code. So let me run through what that looks like. And then we can see what it looks like in the game, because I actually haven't tested this. Yet. I haven't tested this out yet. Um, so this is the first time I'm going to try this line of code. Okay, so if I recall... Okay, if I recall this video um, that I was just watching in my living room <laughs> about half an hour ago, this is what they ended up doing. They ended up making a camera 3D object. They put it here. But they made a 
just a node 3D. So we'll create that. They then made a child node of node 3D as well. And then they attached the camera to this. And I believe the top node, they called it something like controller underscore camera. I can't exactly remember what they called this. I think this would be like the equivalent of the arm um, that I would have to set up in Unreal Engine. So I believe they called this like camera target. And then you have the actual camera 3D. So let's see, we have the camera 3D, which is over there. We have this camera target, which is, this is where I'm gonna get tripped up, I think. It's figuring out, I think the camera controller and the camera target has to be where this camera is. So let's see if I can figure that out. Okay, the camera target, I kinda like this position. I'm gonna actually round this up to three. I'm gonna round this up to two. You can't see what I'm doing because my webcam is blocking it, so I'm gonna move my webcam down lower. So I set the camera to Y axis two, Z axis three. Put it over there, and I'm going to change all these guys to be the same thing. Transform, two, three, and I think I had a rotation of, what was that, negative 35. We'll do the same thing on the x-axis, negative 35, and that angles it down a little bit. And same with this, and I don't actually know if I have to do this for anything except the controller camera. This is part of the guide that I didn't quite follow properly, I'm pretty sure. So we might have to fix this up. Negative 35. And now if I, actually, you know what? Where is this camera? Where the hell did it go? Okay, I think maybe because they're children of the controller camera, I didn't need to do all that work. So we're gonna just go ahead and reset these. And there we go, the camera target is there. And the camera is also a child of camera target, so I just, kind of scaled those settings, I think, or added onto the, them. So I don't know where the hell the camera went. The camera went, oh, it's all the way up there. Yeah, so it got like triplicated. We will also reset this position. And there we go, it kind of looks there. So that's cool. So let's see what happens when we play the game now. I think the camera's gonna be fixed because it's no longer attached to my character. So yeah, it's once again fixed as a separate camera. So now we wanna attach it back to our character. Also, I'm going to turn off GeForce because I don't know why that's on. Apparently, it's not on, so I don't know why it keeps popping up like that. HUD layout? Status indicator? Performance? Comments? I have no clue why this keeps turning on. But I hate it. I hate it. Okay, so I think it was probably under camera controller? that he added some script? No, you know what, he didn't. He didn't do that, he did it under the nutty player script that we already have, your player script. Let's open this up. Let's take a look at the script. Yes, okay. So what he ended up doing was add in a line of code here, which was something like camera controller dot position equals position. Something like that. So let's go ahead and save that. Hit play again. Set index position. Vector three. What's this? So I think I'm doing something wrong in this script. Um, I'm trying to access a child through this dollar sign. I'm trying to access camera controller, um, which should be a child of my character, except I don't have it set up that way. So if I put this underneath here, now I should be able to access this. It would also help if I named this the same as a variable in the code. So let's call it camera underscore controller because I actually like that name better than controller camera. There we go, look at this, it popped up. Holy, we don't, we don't want all that, we just need this. So I want to take the camera controller position and set it to the position of my character. And in other programming languages, I believe, you know, there'd be language like self.position. Um, I actually don't know if this works in Godot, so let's try it out. Okay. My camera is now attached to my player, it looks like. I don't know what is happening here, though. 
I seem to be moving my camera. But not the peanut? I see the peanut over here. So if I zoom out really far. So I don't think I'm attached to the peanut anymore. I'm doing something horribly wrong here with cameras, but that's okay. We're learning together. So maybe if I get rid of self dot position and just do position, maybe that was the problem. Nope. I have no clue what's going on now. I have absolutely no clue. Why do you keep popping up? I don't care. GeForce experience go away. Is that something I can turn off? Exit. Why did it come back? Why does it keep coming back? Go away. I don't want you popping up all the time. It distracts me every time I see it pop up on my screen. Okay, I gotta go watch through this video again. This is a video I was following. I just watched this video like half an hour ago. And apparently, nothing I learned from this video stuck. And that's kind of how game development goes sometimes. You'll watch something. You'll review someone else's code. And then none of it will stick. Until you do it three or four times. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and watch this. So I'm gonna go watch this video again. And find out where I'm going wrong with my camera. Okay, so I think I know what I did wrong here. I set my transformation on the camera controller. I think I needed to set it on the camera target node. So, so let's go do that. Let's see if this helps me out. So whatever I had here is 2, 3, negative 35. Put that here. 2, 3, negative 35. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this to 0, 0. And this camera should just pick up whatever the transformation of camera target is. I think there's another thing where I didn't want to set camera controller or camera target to also follow the transformation of the player. Um, I think I wanted to keep that separate in some way. Because um, I think I'm scaling that in some way, which I think is this top level variable I was supposed to toggle on or off. If true, the node will not inherit its transformations from its parent. No transformations are only in global space. I think I want this checked on as well. Okay, now that I've made that change, um, let's see how this goes. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're following our character. Um, but if you kind of notice, the camera kind of stutters. Like you see this kind of one pixel stutter. I think what is happening there is our line of code is happening before the character moves. See all this movement code is happening and then move and slide is being called which moves the character based off what's happening here. We are essentially moving the camera before our character is actually moving. So if I put this down here. The camera should be following and you do not see that pixel delay. So that is good. And now we want it so that the camera does not statically just follow the character, but kind of slowly follows behind the character and has some sort of smoothing. And we can do that with linear interpolation or a thing called a LERP. And that's not to be confused with LARP because we're not LARPing in this video, at least not yet. So now I'm going to set my camera controller dot position to a variable called lerp and let's see it has a from field a to field and a weight which I think is like a percentage if I recall properly. If I recall this born CG video properly let's go ahead and review what exactly we're supposed to put in there and there we go this is what it should look like so our from is our camera controller dot position to our character's position and this is a 5% linear interpolation. So let's do something like that for our game. I was going to type this out but I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Paste our position and 0 0.05. Let's see what this looks like now. Oh look at that. That's kind of cool. So now the camera is following our character. And then it kind of makes it there um, like 5% later. I don't ex exactly know how the percentage works, but it, I think it's just something you get to play with and see how it feels for you and whether or not you kind of like it. 
This to me still feels a little jarring. There seems to be kind of like an elastic band feel and effect here. It's a bit too strong. I'm going to try 10% now. 0 0.10 should be 10%. Let's reload our scene. Let's wait for GeForce Experience to pop up in the corner. Is it going to do it? Ah, it did it. It did it. I don't know why it's doing that. I want to figure that out. Um, and this is just another thing that's going to distract me from making my game and making these videos, but <laughs> I want to know how, uh, how to turn that thing off because it, it just keeps popping up every time I launch this game, which is kind of cool, but like, I just, I just don't want it today. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it at all. Anyhow, let's see how 10% feels. I kind of like 10%. Uh, horizontally, it still feels kind of snappy. Mm, it still feels a little jarry to me, and this is just something that's very subjective. Um, I hope when you guys are working on your camera, if you're also making a game, watching me make my game, um, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Where this is just something you're gonna, you're gonna feel out a little bit. So let's see, let's set that to 15%. Relaunch this. This doesn't seem as bad to me. I think 15% isn't as jarring to me. It still kind of snaps. You really see it snapped horizontally. But I think 15%, maybe 15 or 20% is probably the sweet spot for me and what my preferences are. Um, but yeah, it's just something you get to experiment with. And uh, maybe after staring at this game and moving my character around on screen um, over the next 30 days, I'm not going to like this and I'm going to change it. And that's the beauty of game dev. So that's all I had for an update today. I've been trying to make some pixel art walls at the moment so that I can start fleshing out kind of a dungeon layout for my little peanut character to run around in. Um, as well as thinking about how exactly do I make it so that my character can run behind a wall and how do I make that wall fade away. So if anyone has an idea of how to do that, leave a comment down below. Um, but for now, those are some things I'm thinking about. I'm still making some art assets and I'm thinking about what next steps are and what is the next thing I want to work on. So anyhow, I'm David. Peace and love. Love and peace. I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.